look how pretty Ash County is. The land's beautiful. It's a beautiful place to live. There's like, what, 90% of the country songs talk about. Ash County has probably some of the best people in the world. A lot of people around Ash will give you the shirt off the back. Super people. I'm proud to have grown up here. I love this job. I'm protecting the good citizens from the people that's breaking the law. It's real life out here. And at the end of the day, I'm going to do everything I can, and I'll leave the rest up to God. County to 118, possible domestic in progress. Female's advising she is being threatened with a gun. Lady grabbed her daughter and ran out of the house. Apparently, her boyfriend got into an argument. He pulled out a rifle and told him he was going to kill him. Mother and daughter right now, obviously in fear, waiting on the side of the road. So he pulled the gun at your head? Yeah, I put it at the back of my head. With her in my arms. So if I get another officer to give you a ride to take, up, take out warrants on him, and I go up there arrest him, will you go down there and swear the warrants out? Yes, I will. Okay. Deputies arrive at the trailer park, where they believe their suspect's hiding. Joe, it's the Sheriff's Department. Come out and talk. There's no really great way to go about searching a house. Go in expecting the worst. We know this guy's armed. Joey! Joey, you better come to the door now. If you're in here, you better sound off. What do you think it might be? Joey, it's Sheriff's Department. Is that closet right there? You better come out now. You better come out now, dude. You know, when somebody's in their arms, uh, it's extremely dangerous for any officer. You're never not cautious in this job. Joey, you better come out now! Is that him? You better come out now, Joey. Joey! Good fellas in here. Yeah, if something fell in the closet, so I was pretty excited. When you clear the house, something falls on you, you do think it's somebody. He was here 10 minutes ago. I bet he's at one of the neighbors. Hello, you seen Joey? He was at his truck a minute ago. No, I just got back from Dollar Tree. Okay. All right. You want to go talk to him? I'll take it back. You know, uh, Joe lives in this trailer up here. Yeah, I know him. And he's not here? No, nah, he was over here early and we went back over there. Is there any problem with you if we come in and just look? No. Huh? Joe, if you're here, you better come out. He went back across the wet way, won't go. This guy just wasn't something right about him. I could tell he's kind of feeding us a load of crap. If you do, and everybody get away from me, we'll come get you again. Eventually, we'll catch you. While deputies in Ash County continue their manhunt, across the mountains in Sullivan County, Deputy Josh Newberry is pursuing a suspect of a different breed. 471. 471. Donkey's back on the roadway, Huffman Hill and Pontypridd. Temple. Right now I'm assigned to work with Donkey Patrol. Stupid Donkey. Uh, if you would contact Animal Patrol and see if they can give us any kind of assistance or maybe have an idea of what we do, reference that Donkey. Donkey Patrol. 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 Donkey I'll be 1097 out here with the donkey, Pony Flats, Huffman Hill Road. And he's mean. He charged my uh, car earlier. No respect. <laughs> Yo. Oh, yeah, go home, buddy.
Now he's in the field, going towards the kettle. Oh, oh no. As long as he doesn't go near the train tracks. Didn't get uh, much training on a donkey corralling uh, at the academy. He's jumped into uh, a neighboring field here, which he doesn't belong. Seems to be pretty content for now. Hopefully he'll stay in. He doesn't have a good history of staying in, so. Right now our dispatch is trying to get a hold of the county agriculture department, see if they can come out here and take this donkey. Hopefully it's tired. Take a nap. Now today was my first donkey corral. Went pretty successful, I think. Meanwhile, over on the other side of the county, deputies have issued an arrest warrant for Edith Van Zandt, a frequent offender they know well. Previously convicted of theft, shoplifting, and aggravated burglary, today she may have added Grand Theft Auto to the list. Deputy Travis Jackson is on the case. Right now, Big Color wants to meet up with us. He's saying that he might have a location on a female that we've got arrest warrants on. In addition to car theft, Edith is also wanted for violating a court order. Hello, what do you got going on? When I reported this morning, uh, they found a car parked here. The lady who bought my car on Monday night. This is the kept Edith, it right? Today. How'd you find out that the car was down here? Well, she called me and told me if I wanted my car to get down here to get it. She is in this wow. little red brick house up here. Well, let's go ahead and go up there then if they're up there. Apparently, with his issue, she stole his car earlier, policeman joyriding with it. The other officers will probably take out charges on that issue. So we're just going to handle the uh, arrest warrant issue now. Sullivan County officers are attempting to serve a warrant on Edith Van Sant, a habitual thief wanted for violating a court order. Is it open or in Oh, that's completely open. Sheriff's office, if you're in here, you need to say so. Steps. Yeah. Dead end. This search comes to a halt. We had suspicion to believe that they were inside. They just wouldn't come to the door. For now, the search for Edith Van Sant suspended, but Deputy Jackson's not giving up. Back in Ash County, Deputy Josh Hoppy Hopkins is still on his manhunt for a suspect accused of threatening his wife with a gun. Now armed with a warrant, Hoppy's ready to make an arrest if he can find him. Oh crap, I didn't. Oh Lordy, please tell me the text they can't come. Oh, this ain't funny. Oh, Betsy. Man can't serve warrants with dry lips. 
trying to find the guy that pointed a gun at his wife's head. While the female was taking out warrants on the guy, the guy we were looking for called his mother-in-law and said he was going to kill himself. He may just be calling and saying that's that girl trying to get her not to take out warrants on him. So if you take out warrants on him, I'm going to kill myself. We see that all the time. Using the number provided by the mother-in-law, Hoppy tries to contact the suspect. Hey, is it Joey? Hey, bud, who am I speaking with? Roger, my name's Deputy Hopkins. I'm just trying to get up with Joey. Do you know where he's at? Are you the guy we talked to earlier? I just need to find Joey and make sure he's okay. He's calling and apparently said he wanted to hurt himself, so I got to check on him. Is Joey right there beside you? Well, can you hand him the phone? You're about to leave. Are you going to take Joey with you? You are? So you're going to take him and run from us? He's giving me the run around. He knows where this guy's at. Can't stand when people lie to me. 118, can I get back out on the trailer park? Old man's truck's gone. And that damn blue truck's gone. Usually, most people that run, they come back to what they're used to. But Hoppy doesn't have time to wait. County to 118. Can't subject surprised that he was assaulted. County, you got any description on the guy walking? Not close to a young male, about 16 years old. 118 County, be out there, isn't it? 118 County, thank crap. What's up, buddy? You want to call? What's going on? I was sitting over there to see it. He was digging his finger up at me down there at that house. I don't bother nobody. Okay, who's he? He's coming by and I said, well, did you stick your finger up at me first? I don't bother. He said, I'll whip your guy down my ass, yo, and you can lay that cane down. I got up. He said, you're going to beat my ass. When I got up, I dropped my cane. That's what he kicked. He kicked it right here real hard. All right, you want to know where he is? He's going to get karate. He's an expert in karate. <laughs> I said, come on, I'll show you what. I'll show you what. Karate's like. Who's he? Hello, old red is. He said, no, back crazy down here, man. You got any idea where he, he went? He went that way. In that house? Yeah. Hey, get out here and talk. Are you Jacob? Uh, yes, sir. Well, get out here and talk to me right now. Come to the door. I'm going to kick it in. Yes, sir. Come here now. Yes, sir. Turn around. Well, hey, what is, what Turn is this Turn around. For? What is this for? I ain't doing What's nothing to man? you. What am I doing? What have I done? Will you please answer my... Hey, Dad! Dad! Listen, push him out. I'm not going to listen to you cuss, okay? Hey, bro, you're breaking my... Chris, hey, 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 hey. Oh. Yes, sir. Come here now. Yes, sir. Turn around. Deputy Josh Hoppy Hopkins is arresting a teenager who allegedly assaulted an elderly man. Dad. When suddenly things turn physical. Okay. Hey, bro, you're breaking my wrist. Hey, God hey, damn. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, God damn. I wasn't doing nothing. Do not buck up please. on me. Do you understand that? I wasn't trying to buck up. Now you get to go to jail for resist. Oh, you just about broke my wrist. An officer showed up at your door. It might do some good uh, treatment with respect. Why am I going to jail, sir? For kicking the man down there. Which man? No, no, no. I cannot explain to you what happened I'll there. I'll talk to you in the car. Yeah, you haven't even heard my story. I didn't mean for all that to happen right there. So I'm really going to jail. Well, yeah. I was walking down the road, chilling, listening to music, fixing to go meet a friend. And he's sitting there. He asked me a question. I walked over there. And he asked me why I flipped him off. I said, I didn't flip you off. And he started reaching in his pocket. He was an army veteran, and I thought he was pulling a pistol. Like this? I was like, uh-uh. And that's just the type of person I am. I've had a gun pulled on me before. And I kicked him inside. The then I, I, I walked back home. Then here y'all was. Kiss first. They're just a bunch of old people, and I guess they just don't like my thug life, kind of. Did you ever consider getting back in school, bud? I tried to, but they won't let me. Why don't you try getting your GED? I've been thinking about it. It's just been trouble right now, like, trying to think where to sleep. I don't live like a regular kid's life. Like, I hustle every day. I don't know where I'm sleeping every night. i got to find a way to eat, man. Eat. No, this is personal, but you want better for yourself, ma'am? I do, but... But what? You don't care about your life? You're going down a bad path, dude.
Yeah, I know. You're capable of achieving better, man. I ain't mad at you. This is my job. If you set in your head to succeed at what you want to do, nobody can take that from you, man. Yeah. That kid charged him with assault on a elderly person, charged him with assault on me, and then a resistant public officer. And maybe that kid will start doing better with his life. You know, if he'll straighten up, he could probably go hang out with the guy that he kicked and probably uh, learn a lot of uh, valuable life lessons from him. So. It's a new day in Sullivan County, and deputies are still on the hunt for Edith Van Sant, a repeat offender wanted for violating a court order. It's been a few days, but we got a location on Edith Van Sant. Now, Deputy Travis Jackson is turning up the heat. Since she wants to be difficult and not cooperate with authorities, then we're going to go up here and check again since it's been a little bit, and if she's there, go ahead and see if we can serve that warrant. We didn't see anything out of the ordinary, so we're going to just keep a good eye on it and check back here in a little bit, and possibly under the cover of darkness, so if we do have to approach the house, it'll be better. Suddenly, Jackson's game plan is interrupted. Missing juvenile. Mother's advising the boy was seen 20 minutes ago feeding his animals. It's a call Jackson fears most. A lost child. We have been called out on a missing child. A 12-year-old boy. His mother said that he went in the back to feed his cats. And I went out there to check on him. And he, was, he wasn't there. And I screamed and hollered for him. He wouldn't ask me. That's when I said, hey, he's gone. Where's that my baby at? I'm going to go speak with a couple of your neighbors. But if you think of anything, you just let the officers that are here know. Just hold on. We'll, we'll find him. We start with the house to make sure he's not hiding in the house or anything. His parents said that he had hid in the house before. Then we branch out from there with the neighborhood helping out and betters our chances that we can find him. You haven't seen him in the backyard at all? I just come up through here and ask these guys because they got a little one too, but they're not home. Is there any other larger bodies of water? Or rivers over there? by the park, there he is. Well, in cases like this, you never want to think that the worst would happen. Time is crucial. They can go ahead and start the Amber Alert. The quicker we get it out there, just in case. We're getting the information to go ahead and start an Amber Alert on the, the incident case that he was picked up or abducted. There's a few officers on the scene. We're looking everywhere we can. We have a image that we have to be strong for, but when a, when a child's involved, that's just a worst case scenario for us. Just hold on, we'll, we'll find him. In Sullivan County, Tennessee, Deputy Travis Jackson is leading a search for a missing child. Is there any other larger bodies of water or rivers? Over there by the park, there he is. When a child's involved, that's the worst case scenario for us. Suddenly, officers spot the boy in the distance. Last I saw him, he just ran by right here. Yeah, he's back at your house. He said he's at the house. Yeah, he's, he's at the house. What's your point? He just looked a little scared. You know what happened to you? I didn't know somebody snatched you or what. Do you care to talk to me for just a second? Can you tell me your doggy's name? Kishi. Kishi? Would it be okay if I give Kishi a bone? Yeah. I'll lay it down, down here for you. What do you think of my badge? It was cool. You like it? What if I was to give you one of your very own? Yeah. Would you hang on to it for me? Thank you. You're welcome. If you need anything from me, I sure appreciate it. God bless yeah. you all so much. I didn't know yeah. my baby. I find it very satisfying that we found him as quick as we did. Good job, guys. All the terrible things that could happen, it, it's just this worked out exactly the way it was supposed to. See you. This call ends without incident. Over in Ash County, Deputy Joe Francis is hoping for a similar outcome. Yeah, uh, 
We've got a 1050 PR, which is a wreck with injuries. I should be coming up on it in a minute. Francis immediately heads over to question the driver. Oh, good to you. What happened? I thought you turned the front sign to slow. Okay. I was stopping my traffic, and the lady in front of this red car right here stopped, and the red car tried to stop, but it screeched, and he couldn't make it home. And he just plowed right into her. Okay. You got any drugs or anything in here? You care if I check? Just step in front of the car, don't Finds no drugs. Okay. But Francis runs a background check on the driver. 15 County Check 29. He ain't got a warrant on him. His record's clear. He going to jail. But he wasn't alone. Okay. Francis discovers there was a passenger in the vehicle, but he fled the scene, and there's a warrant out for his arrest. I'm right now on scene of 1050. I'll be looking for him. Can't be out with him. Bingo. We got one on him. How are you doing, Dakota? Keep hands out of your pocket. Where are you going? Okay, put your hands on your back. Why are you leaving the scene of the accident? Are you drunk? No, I'm not drunk. Then why'd you take off? Well, why'd you panic? He hides from us a lot. He's a repeat offender. Uh, we've always got one telling him he's usually hard to find. Take him to jail for the warrants, and I uh, also found Xanax on him. Here on the bench for me. Have one warrant out on him out of another county. Failed to appear. Yeah, child support warrant on him, then also took a warrant on him for the possession of the drugs. Possession of Xanax, the court date is only it's April the 9th. Nice. You got a lot of court dates to remember. She's going to set another bomb for the Watauga and everything else. The one that walked away is the one we was looking for. Back in Sullivan County, darkness sets in. It's time for Deputy Jackson to move in on his fugitive, Edith Van Zandt, a known thief wanted for violating a court order. We've been going back, driving by the residence a few different times, and we're just going to go over here and drive by it again, see if we can see anything new, see if she can possibly touch us home. If we do make contact with anybody there, of course, we're going to check anybody else that's there, because if they're at the residence, then obviously they're going to know who she is. So hopefully we'll, we'll come up with Edith herself. But it's just right up here, so we're gonna see if she's home. As Jackson approaches the residence, he spots a suspicious vehicle in the driveway. What you got? Uh, it's a vehicle in the driveway we've been looking for. You eat it. Go ahead and step on out here. Three forty-one to one eight four. What you got? Vehicle in the driveway we've been looking for. You eat it. Go ahead and step on out here. After days of searching, Sullivan County Deputy Travis Jackson has finally found his fugitive, Edith Van Sant. All right. Anybody else out here with you? Yeah, I'm a brother. Where's the driver? He's in the house. All right, just when you get out here, put your hands on. You got nothing on you? Go ahead and put your hands on that. Love you, Timmy! Right, me, okay? Okay, come on. And you ain't got nothing on you that I missed. No. The reason I say, if you got anything on you that I missed, you take it into jail, it's found. No, no, no. Go ahead and With Edith Van Sant in custody, 
Jackson runs a background check on her boyfriend and mother. Hey, man, you ain't got an ID on you, do you? Ma'am, do you have an ID on you? Have you ever been in any trouble? In yeah. What kind of trouble? Caught me on. Gravel. Gravel. 341. Dispatch confirms the boyfriends wanted in Virginia. Sample, just to confirm again, we'll extra that. Yeah. All right, man. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Did you know that you had the warrant through Wise County? Love you, I'll write you, okay? No, no, no. Are you okay? What's the matter? Really? Well, I'll tell you this. Just when you get up there and you talk to the judge, just be honest with them and tell them what's going on with you. That'll help. I'm not saying it'll fix everything, but that'll that'll help. What was your original charges? Theft over two grand. What'd you steal? Twenty-two pieces of jewelry. I don't even remember stealing it. I had to say it was like a lot. Because I don't steal until I take those. I don't steal at all. I told my mom, I said, I'm allergic to Xanaxes. Every time I take them, I break out in handcuffs. <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that one. <laughs> We were doing a drive-by of a residence, just right over here. I just happened to see the vehicle. They were still in it. They had even said that they were just there for moments. <laughs> then they were immediately leaving and going somewhere else. It's being exactly where you need to be at exactly the right time, and that's just, that's God at work right there. Yeah. Okay. So, that's where can. Case closed. But over on the other side of the county, a new emergency arises. A uh, 911 hang up call. Uh, what that is is somebody has uh, from that residence has called 911, and when our dispatchers answered the phone, there wasn't nobody there. It could be phone trouble, or it could be something going on. It could be an actual emergency. With limited intel, deputies prepare for the worst. Okay, here. The only reason I'm asking because we got a 911 call from this address. Police, come here. I'm so say. sorry. They have police. Look out here. Look at all these police officers out here. Did you all call 911? They thought something was going on. They thought something bad had happened. What's your name, buddy? Hayden? Hayden, we're here to help you. If you call 911, that means you need help. That's why we're here. We thought you needed help because you called 911. Stay right here. I'll be right back. I might have something, okay? Hang on. Be right back. This is, this is birthday. Today your birthday? <laughs> and you're calling 911? He gonna give you a birthday present. I got something for both of you, okay? Who's, who called us? All right, you're the book. <laughs> you're the one. And there's kids out here that unfortunately see things they shouldn't or are involved in something that they shouldn't be involved in. And, you know, just the little things, you know, we can do. Give them a little badge or a stuffed animal can make a world of difference. Be good boy, okay? <laughs> Alrighty, y'all have a good night. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I apologize. Glad everything's okay. Yeah, thank it's not okay to call 911 unless you have an emergency. But at the same time, let them know we're, we're there if you do next. Well, when we run into children, we don't want children to be afraid of us. We want to be their friends and want them to be our friends because they are our future. Both units 10 8, 10 8, everything's 10 4. It's a small child playing with the phone. 10 4. It's nearing the end of a long night for Deputy Josh Hoppy Hopkins. But before he turns in, he makes one last attempt to locate his fugitive. I'm gonna try to uh, hook this guy up right quick. Uh, the one that stuck a gun to his wife's head while she had a little baby. That guy just got out of jail two weeks ago. Apparently he assaulted one of the jailers while he was in there. We'll be as safe as we can about it, considering he's supposed to be armed. 
on. See if you can't sneak up on while he's in the bed. 118 County. All units going to be back out, 16 North, trailer park. There's 29. Hoppy's joined by deputies Chris Roten and James McNeil. Joey! Several lights on. Joey, it's Sheriff's Department, open the door! County deputies are closing in on a fugitive accused of threatening his wife and child with a gun. Open the door, Joey. Joey, I can see you. I'm coming in. You see him? Let me see your hands. Put both of them up. Now! Put your hands on your back. I was on the Where's his gun at? There's no gun. She just make all that up. Yeah, do you on that one? Ain't nobody a cigarette, dude. Nah. Come on. Oh. 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 Dude, nice spot. <laughs> Hoppy's manhunt is finally over. There you go. Bada bing, bada bing. The suspect will soon face a judge and a series of charges. Assault by pointing a gun. I saw on a female. That's stupid. I ain't got no gun. Brother, I didn't charge you with it. She did. She went up to an ash and swore on the Bible. That warrant service right there was selling justice to a T. Everything fell into place. Got somebody off the street that had a warrant on them. Yeah, Give them a T, buddy. See, most, if not almost all, people that are arrested are repeat offenders. It's a vicious cycle, but it can be broken. And Hoppy knows the best way to end the cycle is to stop it before it starts. Tonight, back on the clock, Hoppy may get that chance. Caller said that his brother was uh, sewing stuff, that he'd already broke a bunch of stuff in the house, and he'd already broke the porch. Mobile home park, and you know, we always seem to stay pretty busy around with those just because of the close quarters of uh, the people who live there. What's up, bud? You causing him trouble? Why are you causing trouble? I'm just mad. No mom. What's wrong? Why are you mad at your mom? We're just not getting along with it. Okay. You got anything all in your pockets? Yeah. I'll check them. Okay, sorry. Where's your mom at? Okay, how old are you? 14. Your hey, mom's good enough to give you food and a roof over your head. Did you do this? Well, that was pretty ridiculous, wasn't it? Hello. What's going on tonight? What are y'all mad about? Who's she? Don't know. I say she's probably doing the best she can, ain't she? I mean, he's 14. Charge him as a juvenile for damage to property. You don't want to start getting charged with a minor already, do you? And then being the system. If you get charged with a minor, then it's going to carry over. And it's going to be a big mess. You know, your family's good enough to provide you a home and food and clothes. You probably shouldn't act like that. A lot of people don't have that, especially a lot of people I do with. You're 14, you're, you know, getting close to being an adult. You should have uh, enough sense and enough decency and respect for your mom not to do stuff like that. Not, not to mention you got little ones here and you start setting an example as a man for them. If he gives you any more trouble tonight, I'll just take out a petition and arrest him, and then uh, we'll send him to boarding school or something. All right, well, you'll have a better night, okay? What's the deal? Why are you acting out like this? Let's talk about it. I got a minute. I'll help you. She just wants to watch a TV show. She never wants to do anything. Okay. And that frustrates you, right? Yeah. Listen, man, you got to stay out of the system so you can be a productive member of society. What do you want to do with your life? I want to be a carpenter. Yeah. Medicine. Okay. Well, carpenters 
uh, a good career. So I get carpenters out here. If you keep getting in trouble, I'm going to hire you because I think you're going to be a troublemaker. Let's figure this out. I know how this be forte. I know how this be stressed. But, man, you got dirt all over the freaking walkway, and you got three little kids in there. All right. Playing sports? Soccer. You good? Yeah. All right. Next time you get mad, why don't you come out here and work on soccer or something? I'm Deputy Hawkins. I'm Jacob. All right. You want to do me a favor? Yeah. How about let's clean this up? Okay. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Listen, man, if you get mad, I don't know. uh, do, Do you believe in God? Yeah. Pray about it, man. He'll help you through stuff. You got a Bible? Yeah. All right, read it, man. I don't think you're a bad dude. I think it's just a tough situation for everybody. The older you get, the more opportunity you have, and you can do what you want and better yourself. Cool? Yeah. All right, bud. If you need anything, I'm Deputy Hawkins. I work all night, okay? If you ever need to call and yell at somebody, I'll listen to you a minute, okay? All right, bud. I know what it is to live in an old trailer, and I know what it is financially not to have anything. Hopefully he'll get up tomorrow and say, maybe I'll listen to at least one thing that deputy said. At the end of the day, what law enforcement's about is, uh, you know, helping people. You know, he may turn out to be one of the best carpenters we have in Ash.